I acknowledge the Tongva peoples as the traditional land caretakers of the Los Angeles Basin and the Southern Channel Islands. I pay my respects to the ancestors, elders, relatives, relations, past, present, and emerging. Will you stand for the call to celebration? Light my light, the world-filling light, the eye-kissing light, heart-sweetening light. Let the mystery and the immeasurable overwhelm. Let everything that can dance sway and turn. The light dances, the sky opens, the wind one runs wild. Laughter passes over the earth. Let, Let the, the butterflies spread on the sea of light. Let lilies and jasmine surge on a fragrant wave. Mirth spreads from flower to flower, gladness without measure. Let, Let heaven's, heaven's river drown its banks. banks. Let, Let love, love water the land. land. Because love is the fellow of the resurrection, scooping up the dust and chanting, Live! Live.
That was cool. <clears throat> this is the best spot in the house when the organ goes, you know. Right here. Zoom. Okay, I am the Reverend Ann Hoffman, the uh, interim senior minister here at the First Congregational Church of Long Beach United Church of Christ, and I want to welcome you here this morning. And to my left is Sister Pam Chapin. <laughs> Pam is one of our uh, very prominent lay leaders here. She is also somebody intricately involved in giving and gifts and has a lot to say about what the church means to her and legacy giving for us this morning. I want to welcome anybody who's here for the very first time. Now, do not point people out, you think, our visitors. We're not into embarrassing people, but if you want to raise your hand and acknowledge yourself as being a first-timer, that would be splendid. If not, we'd be advised we will find you after worship. Oh, hello! Look down here, brave people. <laughs> but they're looking downward, shamefacedly. Do you have a first names? Christine. Dietrich. Nice. Nice German name. Okay. We welcome you here today. We're glad to have you. And um, we have coffee afterwards if you would like a cup. One more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And your, your name is? Lee R. Charlie. Lee R. Charlie. Lee R. <laughs> There was some kind of TV show in the 70s, J.R. <laughs> Lear, it's good to have you. Good, good to have you. Handkerchief and all. Good to have you. Anybody else? Choir, let me know. <laughs> oh, we have the percussion section. Yes. You know... Percussionists, uh, you may think that it's the mathematicians that are the smart ones, but percussionists, because you have to get the right and left side of your brain working both the same amount, we're more brilliant. Organists, too. Organists, too. We're more brilliant than the run-of-the-mill musician, and never forget it. Good to have you all here. A couple of quick three announcements. First of all, Sunday school is charging up. We're getting more young people, children in here. And the department, headed by Tracy halter Balin, who is right here, here, um, is the person, if you have some time and would like to volunteer and want to be with some of our charming and brilliant young people on a Sunday morning, see Tracy about signing up. The other thing is the Social Justice Board, uh, is, this is our kind of month of thinking about climate change and the earth. And one of the things that's on tap is there's an offering of letter writing to happen next Sunday in the Koinonia Room before and after church. We're signing letters requesting our U.S. Senators and Representatives to support legislation that reduces uh, food insecurity in the world, especially at this, as we as the world changes around us. And finally, you may be wondering what all these votive candles are doing here this morning. This is a beginning set up for a special service here tonight at six o'clock to engage with those in the community who would like to be together in a time of worship and thinking about supporting reproductive choice. On the dais with me will be Reverend Susie Bjork from Bayshore, Reverend um, Cynthia Wally Hager from First Congregational Los Angeles, the Rabbi Scott Fox from Emmanuel with um, his cantor. We will also have Reverend Katie Hyman, myself, and um, Sister Allison Mitchell. So 
I think I've got, I think that's all the, and Tracy will be playing guitar and Mark will be here and we have a cellist. It's going to be a lovely service of, service of readings and poetry and music and lighting of candles. And that's at six o'clock this evening. Are there any other announcements for the good of the order? No, okay. Uh, one thing to quickly point out is that the order of worship, the anthem is going to come before the time with children. This is correct, Curtis? This is, yes. Are the children staying to hear the music? Yes. Tracy's nodding her head. Curtis is now nodding his head. <laughs> okay, we're switching that order. So the children are going to be here so they can hear the grand percussionists. All right, let's sing them in. <laughs> and my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace. On vacation starting Monday. <laughs>
wonderful job, great job. So today, um, oh, it's so many of you. Some of you I know and some of you I don't know. So I'm Reverend Ann. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> doing good, doing okay. So I'm gonna tell you a story today that has a drum in it and it's a story about what happens if you keep giving things away. If you keep giving things away. So listen to what happens to the little boy in the story who keeps giving things away. It was a little boy who wanted a drum more than anything. He had seen somebody playing a drum in the street like this and he wanted a drum so much. And when his mother was going shopping to the store, she said, what can I bring you? son and he said oh mom if you could pick me up a drum that would be wonderful she went to the store and when she was finished shopping she didn't have any money left to get a drum so she was heading back and she was feeling really bad and she wanted to bring him something and all she found was a stick on the path she picked up the stick she said oh he can pretend it's a sword or he can um, laser or something he'll play with it and do something she brought the stick home and he was unhappy not to get a drum but he took the stick and he was walking along with it and he heard somebody kind of oh, going oh 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 and he went around and he found there was an old lady sitting by the side of the road trying to light a fire to cook her supper but the coal that she had and the wood that she had was wet and it wasn't catching fire and she couldn't get her supper cooked. So he said, here, I have this stick. This might help you. And he gave the lady the stick. She put it on the fire. And sure enough, the fire grew and she was able to cook her food. And she said, what can I give you? And she looked around and she had a piece of bread. She gave him a piece of bread. He took the bread and he walked on down the path, put it in his pocket. And as he was walking along, he heard a baby cry. And he looked around the corner, and there was a mother trying to keep the baby from crying. And he said, why is the baby crying? She said, because the baby's hungry, and I don't have anything to feed it. And he said, here, I have this piece of bread. And he gave the bread to the mother. She fed the baby. The baby stopped crying and looked around and thought, what can I give you? And all she had, she was a potter. She made pots. She gave him a pot, and he took the pot. He was walking down the road with it, trying to figure out what he'd do with his pot, and he heard some people arguing. And he went over, and it was the, um, the washer, the people that did the washing for the village, and they were arguing because their pot had broken that they were gonna do their wash in. And he said, I just got this pot. You can have this pot, and you can do your washing in the pot. So they took the pot, and they did the washing and they said, what can we give you? And they had an extra coat. And they gave him the coat. And he was walking along with the coat. And sure enough, where he came upon a man who was shivering. And he was shivering because it was cold and he had no coat. So he gave him the coat. And the man gave him, and this is amazing, a horse to use. A horse, a horse. I don't make these stories up. <laughs> he took the horse and he led the horse down the path and he came upon a wedding. Only it was a sad wedding because one of the people in the wedding party couldn't get there because their horse was sick. <laughs> what do you think he does? Gives him the horse. So the wedding's very happy. And the groom says, what can I give you? And there were musicians there, percussionists, and there was a drum, and he said, oh, could I have one of the drums? And sure enough, they gave him one of the drums, and he got his drum from a stick. And that's what happens if you keep giving things away. <laughs> Shall we pray together? Oh God, in this world of mask wearing, let us learn to smile with our eyes. Go, 
Be well. <laughs> the reading this morning is very familiar to us. We hear it often, and we've heard it set to music. I invite you to listen with open ears and open hearts. Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? The next reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. So Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins, worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. The word of God for the people of God. Estas son las mañanitas que cantaba el rey David. Hoy por ser día de tu santo te la cantamos aquí. Despierta mi bien, despierta, mira que ya amaneció. Y a los pajaritos cantan, la luna ya se metió. Qué linda está la mañana en que vengo a saludarte. Ven, venimos todos con gusto y a placer a felicitarte. El día en que tú naciste, nacieron todas las flores. En la prila del bautismo, cantaron los ruiseñores. Ya ven amaneciendo y a la luz del día nos dio. Levántate de mañana, mira que 
Señor Estas son las mañanitas que cantaba el Rey David Hoy por ser día de tu santo te las cantamos aquí Despierta mi bien, despierta, mira que ahí amaneció Y a los pajaritos cantan, la luna ya se metió si yo pudiera bajarte las estrellas y un lucero Para poder demostrarte lo mucho que yo te quiero Con jazmines y flores este día quiero adornar Hoy por ser día de tu santo te venimos a cantar Estas son las mañanitas que cantaba el Rey David Hoy por ser día de tu santo te las cantamos aquí Despierta mi bien, despierta, mira que ya amaneció y a los pajaritos cantan, la luna ya se metió Despierta mi bien, despierta, mira que ya amaneció Y a los pajaritos cantan, la luna ya se metió The reading, The Path, by Lynn Unger. Life, the saying goes, is a journey. And who could argue with that? We've all experienced the surprising turns, the nearly impassable swamp, the meadow of flowers <laughs> that turned out not to be quite so blissful and benign as we first thought, the crest of the hill where the road smoothed out and sloped toward home. Our job, we say, is to remain faithful to the path before us, which is an assumption as common as it is absurd. Really? Look ahead. What do you see? If there is a path marked out in front of you, it was almost certainly laid down for someone else. The path only unfolds behind us our steps themselves laying down the road, you can look back and see the signposts, the ones you followed and the ones you missed. But there are no markers for what lies ahead. You can tell the story of how you forded the stream or got lost on the shortcut that wasn't how you trekked your way to courage or a heart. But all that comes after the fact. There is no road ahead, there is only the walking. The tales we weave of our adventures and the songs we sing to call our companions on. Thank you. 
I've never used one of these little body mics before, so we will see how that works. Can you hear me okay? Good. Well, I wanted to say a couple of things before I began. First of all, I hope I can get through this without tearing up, because you're my church family, but I'm going to do my best. But in putting this homily, or I like to call it a sermonette, but Anne wouldn't let me use that in the bulletin. She said it sounded too much like the Rockettes. So <laughs> she's the boss. But one of the things as I was pulling this sermonette, homily, sermon together, I've been doing so much thinking the past few weeks. And I didn't realize this until we came today and we were singing how the anthem today just ties in so incredibly with what I'm going to be talking about today. Because many of you know that I'm all about music. That's how I got here. But it just was like serendipity that that was the anthem that Curtis, where are you, Curtis? Curtis selected. So thank you. <laughs> we were like Spock, right? We did the mind meld. Okay. So. Why am I here? Why am I here? And what does that have to do with legacy giving? Why I'm here? That question has two components. As many of you know, effective January 1, 2022, the congregation modified the organizational structure of our church. A new board called Building Historic Preservation and Safety was created to consolidate building-related areas of responsibilities under one board. Many of these responsibilities were transferred from the Board of Stewardship and Finance to the new board. This change permitted Stewardship and Finance to focus its efforts on stewardship, legacy giving, audits and investment, and scholarship. Over the years, we found there was so much stuff going on in the day-to-day -day running of the church that Stu and Finn couldn't get to its core responsibilities. So the powers that be, which is us, we decided to create a new board, and so we are moving on this new pathway. The Legacy Giving Committee was recently staffed with Dale Whitney, Bo Chandler, Kathleen O'Neill, and me, with Reverend Ann serving as our resource minister. Ann thought it would be interesting to kick off our plans by having a legacy-themed sermon, and I was drafted to provide one. Thus, ta-da, you've got me today. Now, how did I find First Church, and why do I stay? Bear with me, this will take a while. My religious background began as a Lutheran when I was in middle school through high school. I sang in the choir and was involved in youth activities. Music was my major interest. When I transferred from Long Beach City College to Cal State Long Beach, I again auditioned and joined two choral groups and added a minor in music to what was my major, which was economics. Wes Reed, one of my music professors was hired as the director of music here at First Church. He hired me as a student assistant to sing in the sanctuary choir and also work as the music librarian. That was around 1973. Man, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I sang for a number of years and around 1981, Jim Woods, we all remember Jim Woods, Woody, photographer, sang in the choir was a fellow choir member and encouraged me to join the church. I thought about the different opportunities the church offered, the challenging sermons, the variety of programs, the music, the spiritual nature of the church services, and the friends that I had made. I came for the music, but I found so much more. I decided to join. I have to say that decision changed the trajectory of my life. After joining the church, I became involved in church leadership. 
I was nominated to the Board of Stewardship and Finance and began to learn about the internal workings of our church. I learned about stewardship, the importance of pledging, how budgets were built, served on other boards, and how the ministers, staff, music department, and lay leadership worked together to make First Church function. Over the subsequent years, it led me to take on additional responsibilities to serve our church, serving as moderator, running a capital campaign, serving as treasurer, and getting involved in the preservation of our beautiful historic sanctuary. And I have to say, taking on all those responsibilities, I grew as a person. When I came here, there's no way I would have thought I could do this stuff. But with the love of all of you and the role models, I decided to take the leap. One of my favorite activities, and some of this I'm, is ad hoc. You just have to bear with me. <laughs> I've got it all written out, but I'm adding as I'm going, as the spirit moves me. One of my favorite activities and key accomplishments was working in the archives with Kathy Young, who's watching online, and Barbara Smith. This has been a labor of love for the three of us, resulting in culling and organizing thousands of church documents into a coherent system that provides the ability to access the information. This organizing activity is still going on. Now, I have to admit, I'm not sure that Kathy and Barbara would agree with me that this is a labor of love. I mean, there were times we would look at each other and go, what are we doing? And you have no idea how much stuff was in there. And Barbara and Kathy started calling that before I joined that committee. So there was a lot of stuff to review. Steve Crow subsequently joined our committee with technical assistance from Tim Mountain. Unfortunately, the pandemic slowed us down on completing our work, but we plan to regather and complete this important project in the near future. In honor of the 100th anniversary of the building of this sanctuary, our team looked through important church documents and created the timeline that is now housed in the Konania Room. Working on that project gave me the opportunity to learn about the over 134 years of history of our church and its role in the growth of Long Beach. The timeline documents the important social movements in which our church was involved, for instance, women's voting rights, assisting Europe with food distribution during World War II, the civil rights movement, open and affirming, and environmental issues, to name a few. If you haven't had the opportunity to go through the timeline, I highly recommend you do so. There is so much to learn about our church history and how it relates to the world around us. Our church has been integrally involved in Long Beach, the surrounding community, and the world for 134 years. We take on important issues to educate and influence our community. This is who we are. This is our history. What we have done and what we currently do matters. Don't we want to continue to make a difference? Why am I telling you my story? Because it intersects with this church. This is my church family. I've been coming here for over 50 years. I started when I was two, I know, I know. I can't believe it, that's not true, really. But this isn't just my story. I'm going to go off a little topic here. This isn't just my story, this is our story. I have to say that everyone in this congregation has a story. You're here week after week. You love our church. You spend your time, talent, and treasure to ensure we continue to be a presence in the community. 
When I think of the difference you all make, it is just amazing. Harold Stapp, no, that's not right. Harold Sutherland, <laughs> Harold Sutherland, I'm sorry, I know you're a couple. Harold Sutherland and Robert Stapp do so many things behind the scenes. They make sure that our sanctuary is elegantly prepared for the Sunday service. Harold helps out with ministerial duties when additional help is needed. Nancy Valencia works with the day's children and youth. Martha Duncan works with the drop-in center. The music staff creates beautiful music. The church officers spend hours, and I mean hours, working on church business. I could go on and on about all that you all do, but we, you, our first church, and nothing would happen without you. Now I'm back on script. <laughs> our church founders, Jotham and Margaret Bixby, set the example of selfless giving by providing the land and financing to start up our church. They provided the seed money to build this sanctuary we are now in. Margaret Bixby stated, our church was designed for worship, but built for service. 134 years later, this is still true. And I see heads nodding. So true. I had church role models like Wilma Sykes, Barbara Bennett, and Dorothy Detheridge, who were three of the first women to serve as moderator. I learned about the importance of stewardship and legacy giving when gifts from Barbara and Cy Bennett, Billy and John Pannell, Spy and Della Ramsey, Bud and Mary Ellen Kilsby, Ken Dixon, Dorothy Detheridge, Ken Caskey, and other iconic members of our church. If you take the time to walk around our church, you'll see multiple plaques with names of past members that provided treasure to fund specific programs, capital campaigns, and general legacy gifts. What did these past members have in common? Most of them served the church through leadership positions as officers or on boards and committees. Most importantly, they loved this church. All of these members made financial commitments by including the church in their wills. Whether the gift was small or significant, like we heard in the Mark uh, scripture today, the common thread was that they recognized the importance of ensuring our church would live into the future on the corner of arts and justice. Now to the main point of this little sermonette, which is legacy giving and including the church in our wills. We all have gone through the horror of the past two plus years due to the COVID pandemic. Some of us lost loved ones to the virus. We were unable to mourn the loss of those loved ones. Family members couldn't visit parents. Children couldn't go to school. We couldn't come to church. Our lives were turned upside down. The saving grace for me was golf and online church. I find it amazing that we didn't miss one week of church when the pandemic hit. And that really is amazing if you think about it. The week the church closed for in-person services, the service went online and was held in the Konania room. Each subsequent week, the services expanded with sermons by Elena Larson and music from our soloists, Curtis and Mark. After some time, and it was determined safe, the service was moved to the sanctuary where it expanded each week and the technical aspects of the service improved. After Elena Larson left, we hired Reverend Tom Emanuel and then Reverend Ann Hoffman to carry on the ministerial responsibilities of our church. And they have done an amazing job in what is very and have been very difficult circumstances. So kudos to Ann and kudos to Tom.
While there continued to be minor technical glitches in the online services, the important thing for me was I was able to spend time with my church family and hear the word of God. I felt my week was incomplete if I didn't attend online church. This was important to me. As the pandemic dragged on, and I understand we're still dealing with that, it got me thinking. We don't know what each day will bring. Accidents happen. One can step off a curb and be hit by a car, and it's over for us on Earth. The death of Terry Brewster hit me hard, as we were very close in age. All these thoughts were going through my head, keeping me up at night on some evenings. What did all this mean? My personal and financial matters were not in order. If something happened to me, distribution of my assets would not necessarily go where I wanted. I knew I wanted the church to receive a legacy gift, but I didn't have it in writing. I told my sisters, who are listening, I hope, <laughs> this is what I wanted, but it wasn't fair to them to make those decisions. Last fall, I took action and hired an attorney to create my will and trust. It was difficult to think through all of the relevant issues and to make the critical decisions one must make regarding health, end of life, and financial options. I now have peace of mind that my wishes will be followed. Did you hear that, Pat? When making the decision to include the church in your will, there are different options available. One can designate a specific activity or fund. For instance, you can leave your gift to fund scholarships. You can fund the organ. You can provide for the budget. You can put your gift in the preservation fund or leave it as a general legacy gift. It is your decision. Please know that stewardship and finance, the church council, and the treasurer will follow the terms outlined in your documents. This is important for you to know. What you put down on paper is what will happen if you leave a gift to the church. Even though we still follow pandemic protocols, we are blessed that we can now worship in person in addition to online. I can only speak for myself, but being here in the sanctuary enhances my spiritual experience. I hope this sermonette gets you to thinking about your own personal and financial matters. I encourage you to take appropriate steps you believe appropriate to finalize your wishes. God forbid, if something unexpected happened to you, are you confident your wishes will be followed? It's something to think about. Thank you for letting me share my story. Good job. Shall we pray? Oh, breath of the world, breathe in this moment and fill this sanctuary with your life and your presence. We are seekers who believe that everything just and good was built into the molecules of existence from the beginning. We are a people who pray not with a list, but with a heart open to the truth. Be here with us, O God. May the spirit of justice and possibility, hope and fruition, the bravery of truth-telling, the transformative quality of compassion, may it all flood through us into this world. May our lives add light upon light so that the darkness has no chance to spread fear and despair. 
And now, O oh God, may those we love feel the touch of your healing, the caress of our care, and the witness of our attention. Let us pray together our common prayer. O oh God of all creation, may your best hope for us come true. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Let us not be tempted to turn from your world. Deliver us from indifference for all that is and could be now and forever. Amen. Dear God, our church is important to us and we want to continue to make a difference on the corner of arts and justice. We share our time, talent, and treasure to make this happen. Please help us to do your work by being generous in our treasure gifts. The morning offering will now be received.
Dear God, we are so blessed. We worship in a beautiful space. We have ministers that create thoughtful, beautiful, and challenging services. Our music staff, choirs, and bell groups provide inspiration to enhance our services. We thank our members and friends for their dedication in sharing their hard-earned gifts to further your work. We do this in the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. I thought you were going to come up and slap me. I have to say this. After everything that's going on, when I heard someone walking behind me, I got a little nervous. <laughs> Sorry. I know, I know. <laughs> Just buddies.
Quick word before the benediction, I am going on vacation. The Reverend Tom Emanuel will be here preaching for three, count them, three Sundays in a row. I will be back for the last one. Um, and uh, Katie Hyman is going to be uh, taking care of any pastoral needs while I'm gone. In the name of God, who is in every molecule in these pews, in our hands and hearts, Jesus Christ, brother, walker on desert roads, the Holy Spirit that breathes through all of us. May the sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way home. Amen. Amen.